rather than screaming right now, rather than saying something stupid. God's word makes it clear that obedience is better than sacrifice. Like, how can I hear God's voice? How can I be discerning? Hi, welcome back to my channel. I hope you guys are doing well. I am definitely doing well. I'm very happy to say that. I actually was like, all right, let me get ready today. You know, I have nowhere to go or anything, but I was just feeling like, let's put myself together for once. You know, maybe I'll fail, maybe I won't. Oh no, no, I just ripped my hair. My hair is so fragile. When I do my devotions, I, for the most part, tend to take the scripture and then I'll use that as my Bible reading. It's called The Power for Life. I put it on my Instagram if you follow me. The spirit of truth dwells with you and will be in you. This so little boy was asking his dad about how do you, how do you believe in the Holy Spirit and how do you even know he exists? And then dad brought him to a power plant and he was like, well, do you believe in electricity? You, you believe it because you see it working. And then it's the same way with the Holy Spirit, even though you don't see him physically, you see him working in people's lives and in you. After reading this, I opened my Bible app the devotion was spiritual habits and this was really cool too because it was talking about how when we start to, to practice spiritual habits like reading your word, reading the word, devotions, quiet time, prayer, all that kind of stuff, when we start to practice that it becomes a rhythm of your life and it's so um, enriching to us. But Forming spiritual habits shouldn't be the end goal. And sometimes we just think of it like, oh, we have to do this, it's a to-do thing. What the end goal should be is forming a more intimate relationship with God. And how this correlates is that it says in here, God's word makes it clear that obedience is better than sacrifice. Instead of doing things in a sacrificial way, it should be done from a place of humble surrender. And this brought me to, again, John. John 14, and the first line is, if you love me, keep my commandments. 15, it's talking about Jesus promises the Holy Spirit. And I will pray the Father and he will give you another helper that he may abide in you forever. The spirit of truth. I have been going through different things in my life where there's different scenarios of I'm fighting my flesh. We're all fighting our flesh and we're all in a battle of spiritual warfare that we're like unaware of. We don't even, sometimes we are, but sometimes we're not even aware of it. And then also your own flesh you're fighting from a day-to-day -day basis, from the big things to the little small things and everything. And so I've been going through this process of refining and like, I, I will always be, I think we will always be in that kind of process of growth, but like, I just feel like I've been really um, active in trying to hear what God's saying to me. I'm currently going through it and it's been a really like long, stretching, ongoing season of learning this. And going back to being obedient is better than sacrifice, I feel like growing up and even in my adult years, I always unknowingly had the mentality of like let me sacrifice over the like the humbleness of being obedient i just feel like there was more of a fear to it there was more of like whatever god like okay i'm gonna give this up for you i'm gonna stop doing this because you want me to not out of like not out of a place of like lord let me be obedient to you because i love you because this is what you want for me. And so I feel like in this season of my life, that is a big lesson for me. Even when it comes to Danny and my past, I literally, I, I didn't always walk in obedience in that. And I really just said, here, God, fine. Like, you don't want me to, want me to be with him in this time. Here's my sacrifice, you know? Um, it came, good came from it. But my point is like, oh, if I would have walked in obedience throughout that whole time, I would have prevented so much. And anyway, so get, to get back to this, it's just saying that Jesus promises us the Holy Spirit. I don't, I don't think that we realize at times, even myself, like how, how much of a gift that is, that the Holy Spirit is dwelling in us. 
if we keep his commandments. The spirit of truth whom the world cannot receive because it neither sees him or knows him, but you know him, for he dwells with you and will be in you. I will not leave you orphans, I will come to you. I just feel like right now in this time, there's so many people in my life and in myself that I'm noticing the act of obedience and the fruit that comes from that. And it's, it's the most beautiful thing to see and to experience yourself. Not only is this, you know, the Holy Spirit giving us peace, but he is a comforter and he's a guide in our life. It says here that the word translated helper combines the ideas of comfort and counsel. The Holy Spirit is a powerful person on our side working for us and with us. And I think for like so long, you, for me anyway, like you kind of take that for granted. You don't realize how much power is in that, how much power the Holy Spirit has and can do through you. I think we're just doing ourselves such a disservice and making our life so much more difficult and complicated when we just don't surrender the things that we know hinder us. Because we're fighting that fight, we're fighting the flesh, we're fighting what we want. Our little tiny brains, we think we know what's best for us. We think we have all the answers to our future. If we just do this, or if we go this certain way, if we stay with this person, our minds are so little in comparison to what God knows, the creator of the universe. And I had a couple instances this week where I felt like asking the spirit to be among us in my home, asking the spirit to guide me in each and every little decision. Um, I just saw like the power of the Holy Spirit and I've, I've experienced that in my life, but it's just like this season in particular, I'm like trembling in my voice. This season in particular, I really, really, it's really evident. I see my mom and I see how she started a women's group, an empowerment group for us. And just like that, walking in that obedience, all of the fruit that's coming from that, the, the growth in who she is and the lives around her, the bonds of the women, the vulnerability, the, the power of prayer, the connection. Family members, their act in obedience, what's happening in their lives, I'm seeing that. I'm seeing in myself, like, something that happened where I felt God speaking to me. To say something to someone, said it. It was like a confirmation for them. Just in this week alone, if I'm being honest, just like me and my home, fighting my flesh, saying like, Holy Spirit, how am I supposed to react to this? What am I supposed to do? Um, active, actively thanking God and praising God in this season or in a moment of hardship, in a stressful time, me just saying like, rather than screaming right now, rather than saying something stupid uh, or like losing it, let me just say, thank you God, take a breath, how do you want me to react to this? And I saw the benefit of that. It's not only changing me, it's changing my marriage, it's changing my family dynamic, it's changing um, my view of God, just the power, It, I guess taking it to another level. And I'm not trying to make this like all about me and all like my progress, but it is kind of because I just feel like God is really working and it's like, the, it's amazing and I just, I know so many people struggle. So many people are struggling. They're dealing with these things and they're fighting the flesh, they're fighting the battles, the spiritual warfare. They're not, not taking advantage of this gift that God has given us of the Holy Spirit. And I think that's what we all long for. We all long for like, how can I hear God's voice? How can I be discerning? And even though like everything's not perfect in my life and everything, I mean, there's so, so many things that need work on myself, on my marriage, on um, me as a mom. I, I share that with you guys, me trying to work on stuff. Um, I'm able to really hear from God. I know that it's hard when you're, especially in a season that's 
challenging or you have a temptation that is overbearing or you're just your flesh is weak it's hard to surrender in obedience and out of a good place because maybe you're bitter maybe you're angry maybe you're i don't know frustrated um i myself had a lot of emotional strongholds and it took me such a long time to get out of that but i know god it i mean god is changing me i once heard great sermons are not preached they're lived And I just, I really want to start living my life to the fullest with c complete confidence in God. And I know for myself and experience throughout my life when I'm walking in ob full, full obedience, full surrender with a pure heart, um, you, have to, you, you have freedom. You have such freedom and confidence in God. And that's when, you, that's when you hear from him. You'll get those answers. And um, God will use you in a really powerful way. So I hope this was really encouraging to you guys. And I love you so much. Oh, um, one more thing, quickly. Um, thank you for whoever is praying for me. And it, like I have amazing people in my life. Just thank you for... If you're watching this and you've been praying for me, my friends, my family, um, or you, you guys, my subscribers, I've really seen the power of prayer lately. And I also want to just say to you guys, if this is speaking to you and you really want, you really want to walk in this and you want the Holy Spirit to work, I really, really want to suggest that maybe it's time for you to join a group um and fellowship and because when two or more are together he says that he is near he is with you and the power of prayer three strands are are stronger than one i mean in quarantine i know even you guys uh overseas you, you were sharing that like you're in lockdown right now so it's probably impossible to do this but you can even zoom or have a phone call or something um, that where you can meet up with people in some way, but community and community accountability, just prayer is just so powerful. Okay, the enemy doesn't want us to be having that that strength and power with other people. He wants us to be alone because that's where he can lie to us and play games with our mind, and we can just be get comfortable in what we're you know we're doing in ourselves. So I do want to encourage you. That was another thing that just came to my mind that um. It's time to, to have someone pray for you or pray with you. There's nothing bad that can come from that, you know? Also, if you have any prayer requests, comment them below. Um, I'd love to pray for you. Love you guys.